I feel like Asian diets get a lot of notoriety for being one of the healthiest. Like people always talk about, oh, the Japanese eat only rice and fish. It's healthy. And then right. they eat a ton of white rice. Like so, And they're all thin and healthy. Right. Are they healthy? Well, they're a little bit healthier than we are mm -hmm. because they're not eating as much oil, fried food, oils, and they're not eating as much meat. They eat a lot of vegetarian they cuisine as well. Bit, a little, and vegetables. I've... They're eating probably more vegetables, but they're also eating more salt. Mm-hmm. They're eating higher levels of salt than we eat, so it balances itself out. They don't live much longer than we do because they have about the same lifespan. Because we have more heart attacks and they have more hemorrhagic strokes and we have more of this cancer and they have more stomach cancer. So they have more other diseases that are linked to the high salt intake. Right. And we have more other things work to the bacon and meat and cheese intake. So they, even though they're eating, you know, so the difference in lifespan is very minimally. Minimal. Even the Okinawans in the, called the so-called blue zone, which were living about, you know, six to eight years longer than the average American, are not living longer than Americans now in Okinawa because obviously they even fast foods and other processed foods have invaded those areas of the world. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so they're not eating the traditional diets where they're living on mostly sweet potatoes with, with vegetables and a little bit of fish, which was not the, it wasn't a great diet, but it was much better than the American diet. But still, with nutritional science, we could design a diet style that enables almost everybody to live past 95 because we can you know, keep them eating food that are mostly whole plants that are low glycemic and also don't make you fat. Because if you, and if you overeat calories, and the major reason, that, one of the major reasons people in America overeat calories is because they put oil on their food. So it's bad enough they're having all the high glycemic carbohydrates, then they throw an extra 500 calories of oil on top. And that causes an interaction between oil puts a lot of fat immediately in your bloodstream. So now you have a lot of sugar in the bloodstream with a lot of fat in the bloodstream, which raises insulin and also raises fat storage. So the fat in the blood gets immediately stored as fat. And the and so you're storing everything in the blood as fat. Right. You know, whereas that if you were eating, if your fat came from avocados and nuts and seeds, like on a nutritarian diet, the calories would be absorbed so slowly that they would pre be preferentially burned for energy and the sugar would be absorbed more slowly, and those would be preferentially burned for energy. They wouldn't be putting food into the fat supply. We'd be putting food into energy so we'd feel vibrant, active, strong, and we wouldn't put fat on our body. I know people think, yeah, you hear that avocado is a fatty food, but now we know it's a slower fatty food. Is that correct? Right. In yeah. other words, I, I have this term caloric rush, which we've talked about here a lot. Mm -hmm. The caloric rush refers to not just the carbohydrates entering the, the bloodstream fast with sugar, but also oils into the bloodstream fast. You get a lot of calories in the blood at one time. And that's the cause of diabetes, is putting a lot of calories in the blood at one time. Right. Which then make the body has to store it as fat. And then the beta cells in the pancreas, having to produce so much insulin, month after month, year after year, eventually they get overworked and they can't keep up with the insulin needs of the body. And they're having to produce five or 10 times as much insulin as a person of normal weight eating a healthy diet would need to produce. And it's all the years of the beta cells to being so overworked that they start to decrease their capacity for insulin production. Beta cells are tired. They, they tire out. Yeah. Right? They poop out. And, but even when they poop out, they're still producing more insulin than a person of a normal weight on a good diet would ever need but they're producing excess amount, but it's not enough for this person to keep their sugars down. Right. So now the sugars start to creep up. So the sugars are creeping up and the person's diabetic or pre-diabetic with, along with excess amount of insulin production, but it's not enough insulin to keep the sugar in the normal range. So it's relatively insulin deficiency, but not absolute insulin deficiency because they have enough insulin if they were a normal weight and ate healthily.